Hey guys, what's up? So it's another antique eBay unboxing. And what else is it? It's probably an antique perfume bottle because I love antique glass perfume bottles, that is. I pretty much try to collect the ones from the Victorian era, but I actually will settle for Art Deco era as well. But anything uh, before, like, you know, anything after the 30s, I'm not interested in. For some reason, anything 30s and below, but the older, the better. So generally, the ones I really look for, besides the Victorian, are ones from the turn of the century, from about 1900 to the mid-20s. Um, and they are called piston pump atomizers. Now, I have a lot of videos showing you my various piston pump perfume atomizer bottles and explaining all about them and showing. But for those of you who are new, uh, new, like, subscribers or just happening upon my channel, um, I'll give you like a little bit of an explanation. So before there were piston pump atomizers and atomizers in general, there were regular bottles and it was like more vial-like and uh, back in the Victorian era and before, of course, people didn't have commercial perfumes like we have today where we go into a store and we buy ready-made perfume in bottles. Pretty much people would have their own bottle that was non-disposable. So they would try to get like a high quality fancy one and they would have to get these bottles filled and they would go to apothecaries. I, I probably pronounced that wrong. A apothecary, um, some kind of pharmacies and uh, places where they sold scented oils. And, uh, oh, this is even tinier than I thought. I'm a little disappointed. The seller had this for 60 something dollars, and I put it in my watch list, and he sent me an offer if I wanted to buy it now for $45. I agreed because $45 is a good price for this, but I'm a little disappointed, but actually I'm really not. Um, at first, I'm like, wait, this thing is really tiny, but actually it's really the smallest one I have in my collection and I'm actually quite tickled by it right now as I look at it it is so teeny tiny um let me just get this mishmash out of the way to show you guys um as you can see this is a real travel size one now they came in different sizes and they were still considered travel travel size that is and uh but this one is really really cute and petite and French and uh French makers were mostly the ones that made these. Now, most of the glass on these piston pumps, and I'll show you the design. You can see the top. We have this little nozzle with a little chain dangling from it. This was the cap, so you would unscrew the cap. And how it worked was once the cap was unscrewed, this would dangle from the chain so you didn't lose it. And you would press or depress this little button up and down, and wow, it still works. A lot of times these do get jammed up, and the reason they get jammed is because over many, many years, a hundred years or so, the perfume that once remained in here and in the little mechanisms turn into glue. And a lot of times these seize up and they actually turn into unworkable junk. And it's beautiful to see that the mechanisms are still working and working quite well, that is. Now, these little piston pump bottles, you would actually take the button, press it down, and turn it, I think it's clockwise or counterclockwise, and it would stay depressed. And it would fit in a lady's like purse, and uh, she could travel with it. But this is really, really quite tiny. Now, this is the first one that I have in my collection that was made by a maker that stamped it La Parisienne, or Parisienne. I don't know if we can get a zoom on that. But uh, this is pretty cool. Now, when you see letters like this, don't know if you can see that, that means it's a like applied, uh, the French applied a patent for the design or it's a patent pending. And uh, so you'll generally know that this is definitely French. And a lot of times it will say made in wherever, but a lot of them don't have that made in thing. So this is telling me this is probably from the 20s. It's not an early one from circa like 1900, 1903. Now the glass, um, they had companies that would actually make the glass for them separately and another company that would make the mechanisms out of metal. So when you look at the glass, the glass is generally a French glass made by a couple of different makers. And some of them were very, very, very high, highly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Actually, really, really uh, well-known French glass makers. And they made high-quality, expensive glass, such as Gala. 
uh, St. Louis, Baccarat, and others, and also even including Czechoslovakia, which we know as the Czech Republic today, or back then was known as Bohemia. Um, they would make the glass as well for it. But most of these French, these little French atomizers were used uh, utilizing French glass. Now, I believe this to be Baccarat, also Lalique. By the way, if you can get one with Lalique or Gala glass or Nancy Daum, I believe they pronounced it, D-A-U-M glass, then you're going to be paying big bucks for it. Now, this looks like Baccarat, and Baccarat is a very, very, very well-known glass company that started, I believe, in the 1700s, making glass for the kings and queens and the royal court. Um, it's like the Cadillac of glass. Now, this one is ribbed. You can feel the cuts. It has hand cuts going into it, like little panels. Don't know if you can see that. It's hard to show, but it has little panels going all through the bottle. This is really quite beautiful. Now I'm going to show you some other examples, and then I'll quickly show you some of the examples in my collection. Now when you get these, these are uh, actually getting more and more expensive to collect. Generally, one that's not, you know, really, really excessively decorated. Some of them had enameling work on it, acid etching, almost like beautiful iridescence. Uh, de iridescent designs going through it, hand-painted enameling and whatnot. Um, these plain ones generally will sell in the 100 to $150 price range, but the more uh, like uh, elaborate ones with uh, like glass makers such as Lalique and uh, Gala and stuff like that will sell in the hundreds to thousands of dollar price range. Now this one, if I was to sell it in uh, my Etsy shop, when I used to have an Etsy shop, I would sell this actually for between $200 and $225. Now, that's not to say that it would uh, be quick uh, quick and easy to sell at that price, but I would hang firm. And uh, let's check out some other ones hanging in there, and I'm going to show you uh, the history of it. Now, like I said earlier, if you're going to uh, get a Lalique one, you're going to pay the big bucks for it. Uh, usually, Lalique had these beautiful raised designs with ladies going throughout it. Now, sorry, I'm actually filming my computer screen. This is like absolutely and utterly junk uh, to do so. But let me try to show you a better picture. There we go. You can see the like these uh, muses or ladies going throughout the piece. I believe this is like a cameo type of glass. I'm not an expert on glass, but you will pay $2,900 for something like this. This one's dated circa 1910, I believe. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of the history and uh, try to explain to you. Here we go, the bottles. Now I'm on a website called perfumeatomizers.blogspot.com. If you want to know more about perfume bottles, that is a great site to go on. Now it says the glass for the atomizer bottles were usually French, Bohemian, like I said, the Czech Republic, American or English. I forgot to mention that. Um, mostly though, most of them are French and Bohemian. Baccarat was responsible for many of the heavy cut glass bottles you may find in your travels like mine. Other companies such as Lalique, Gala, St. Louis, and Dom Nancy also made bottles for these atomizers. The glass is rarely marked, but sometimes you might find the acid etchings of Lalique, Dom Nancy, and Baccarat. Lalique bottles often have the atomizer mounts by Marcus et Bardell and Marcel Frank. Extremely rare bottles may have dual, triple, and quadruple chambered com uh, compartments. Now, I have one of those, actually, in my collection for different scents, each with its own nozzle. Here's a 1928 ad for one of them, and it's uh, saying Lalique or St. Louis glass, exclusively designed and tinted. Now, back in 1928, uh, it was priced at $4.45 to $6.95. It's saying regularly uh, priced between $7.95 to $10.95 on the higher end bottle and $4.95 to $7.45. Uh, to get an idea of how much that was in today's money, really fast, hold on. So we'll go with the higher end bottle at $6.95 and here we go. Well, $1.1890 was worth $32.56 today. So what was it? $6.95? And let's see. In 1923? And we'll calculate. So $6.95 in 1923 was worth 
and 42 cents. So these were sold between like 80 to $120. Really quite expensive back for that time frame. Now it did mention generally priced at $10.95. Let's just see, just for shits and giggles. That would have been $189.72. Now some of them were marked, I believe, at uh, $4.95. Just for shits and giggles, let's check that out. And again, that would still be very expensive for a perfume bottle, $85.76. Now let's take a look really fast at some other ones that you might find. And uh, this one is uh, small like mine, $225. Now this is most likely Baccarat glass, and it's a beautiful hobnail pattern in uh, blue and clear. So it's a blue and clear cut, uh, I believe they call that uh Blue clear cut glass, something like that. I can never get it right. Here's uh, another design. And this one is broken, actually. I wanted to buy it, but this is really gorgeous. Look at these panels. This is probably Baccarat. And uh, this is made by the same maker as me. It could also be Gala. Um, I don't think it's Lalique. And it's being sold for $195.95, but the mechanism does not work. And uh, that's uh, quite pricey. And let's check out some more. Okay, so we have, here's another one for really cheap, $101.49. So generally, if you can get these for $100 or less, start collecting them and start collecting them now. Here's another example made by Theophilus Martin, which was a French maker. And sometimes they come rounded with some etching in the glass, really quite beautiful, $515.99. Will that seller get the price? Probably not, and if they do, they'll be waiting a long time to sell that item. Uh, here's another example, $360, and this is opaline. Well, it's it's actually cased glass. They call it opaline, but this is actually cased glass, which was popular during the 20s and 30s. It's really not opaline glass. Made in France, again, and we see that beautiful piston pump atomizer mechanism, $360. Will they get the price for that? We may never know. And here comes another one. Actually, some examples that I see on Etsy. This one being sold for $230. Um, the pictures are actually not good. Here's another one, $288. Um, this one is a bargain. I might even buy that if you guys don't already. Um, I saw this one. I had this in my faves. Uh, $98. This is actually a steal. And I really like the way the top is. The top is actually unique and unusual. And this is telling me this is an older one. This is one of the earliest ones by the way the top is made. And I like this blue crackle glass. And I hope you guys don't get any ideas right now and buy it. Please don't buy it because I'm saving up my money for that one. Here's another example that's in my faves. And it's only $99. This is actually Baccarat. This is a bamboo design that they had in the early 20th century, um, actually about 1900 to the 1920s, and uh, beautiful green color glass, really quite lovely. And again, don't get any ideas. <laughs> and uh, here's some other examples. This one, $79. I was like, what, what? <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, this one, it's all dented on the top, so no, I don't want it. And, uh, yeah, I hate when they're all dented on the top. This one, I was like, oh, my God, $75, and it has enamel glass. Um, I better purchase that quickly. And it turns out, I will show you, the whole top is missing. It's hollow. And, uh, yeah, it's it's total junk. You're never going to get the uh, piece to go with that. There's no replacements for this anymore. So what did you learn? Let's uh, check it out. What did you learn today? So you learned that these are actually going up in value. Um, if you can get them for $100 or less, grab them if they are actually in working condition. If this part does not work or it's seized, sometimes these buttons are stuck in that position and you can never get them to depress, do not buy. If the glass is chipped, broken, or slightly damaged, um, where you see flaws in it, do not buy. Any kind of glass that has any damage in it, even uh, if it's really, really rare, actually loses a lot of value, at least 50 to 80% value. And so you don't want that. So you're going to always look for the best example that you can afford. Um, if you can restore it, uh, maybe you can get a bargain. But generally, you cannot find pieces for this. And there are no replacements unless you buy a burner one to uh, replace with parts. But uh, you're not going to get 
uh, anywhere buying a burner one because you may never know because all of these makers used all different size pieces and springs and innards and parts and buttons on top so chances are to fix one of these it's not going to happen so i hope you learned something i hope you you're you're enjoying my perfume bottle videos there are some more that i'll probably be buying in the near future i do think this is actually adorable at first i was disappointed because it was so teeny tiny but i'm actually tickled pink with its uh, size right now and its condition uh, it was quite a steal at $45. I got lucky on this. And uh, I hope you guys, uh, you know, start looking for these perfume bottles and actually start collecting as well. If you have any questions, write it in the comments below. I'm not an expert in the uh, collection or collecting of perfume bottles, but I learn a little bit, you know, a little bit more every single day. If you have anything that's interested uh, to teach me or tell me. I'd love to hear your comments in the comments below. Thanks for watching. So long, and I'll see you guys all soon.